This is the ultimate beginner's guide to nail guns. We're gonna talk about battery versus air powered. We'll talk about brad nails versus pin nails. We'll even talk about the different size nails and what you're gonna use them for. And I'll share a couple tips I've learned along the way. This video is brought to you by 731bullworks.com. Go check out our online store. We have easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. If you use code BRADNAIL, you'll get 20% off any order. One of the most common questions I get asked fairly regularly is which type of nailer should you get, a brad nailer or a pin nailer first? I think you should have both, but if you're gonna pick one, I would say go with an 18 gauge brad nailer. It's really the most universal type nailer that you can get. As far as battery powered or pneumatic powered, I would actually say pneumatic, even though the battery is much more convenient to use because you don't have to worry about dragging around this hose. It is a lot more heavier. This is a huge difference between these two guns. For the size and weight difference, this is the Brad Nailer with a four amp hour battery. See how much it weighs? Seven pounds, 9.4 ounces. That thing is a beast. The 18 gauge Brad Nailer for a pneumatic gun, they both have nails in them. So that adds to a little bit of the weight. But you're looking at two pounds, eight ounces. That is a huge difference between the weight of those two. Just for giggles, the pin nailer, it's gonna weigh about the same 2.2 pounds. There is a big difference in size and weight between these two nail guns. This is an 18 gauge, this is an 18 gauge. You see the difference. The main thing is because this thing actually has to create the pressure to drive the nail inside here. This one does not. This one's much lighter, much more convenient. All right, you can see here, we've got multiple sizes of nails, different lengths and different big around. These are actually pin nails. These are 23 gauge pin nails. These are really tiny. They don't even have a head on them. They're just straight. When you compare those to a, an 18 gauge brad nail, you can see the brad nail actually has a head on it and they're actually much bigger around as you can see there. So this is actually gonna leave a little bit bigger of a hole. This will leave a very tiny hole. What size brad nails do you actually need in the shop? I keep several, these are very inexpensive and they're just, I just pick them up whenever I think about it. I got some one inch, I've got some inch and a quarter, which is my most used size, inch and a quarter. I use these all the time. I've got a couple, three, four, five packages of these are laying around at all times. And then I have an inch and three quarter if I really need a longer nail. I really don't need anything longer than an inch and three quarter for brad nailers. The longer the nail, the more force it's gonna to take to get it all the way through the wood, especially when you're driving into hardwoods. And for pin nails and one inch and an inch and three eighths is really all you, all I need in my shop. That's all I ever use. I actually only have an inch and three eighths on hand right now. Uh, this is the size that's most common. And it works extremely well for my needs. So you don't really need a whole lot of variety of nail sizes. I would pick up an inch, two inch and a half, inch and three quarters. You should be covered pretty much everything you need to do in your shop. But if you need smaller or a little bit longer for the pin nailer, it does go down to five eighths of an inch, a really tiny little nail, all the way up to inch and three eighths. And on the pneumatic brad nailer, you got five eighths up to two inch, and on the battery powered five eighths to two and an eighth actually. So the kit I got actually come with a 16 gauge finish nailer. I've never used this. It's been in the drawer. I just, I don't use nails that big. And in case you don't know, the higher the number, the smaller the nail, the lower the number, the bigger the nail. So a 16 gauge nail is actually bigger around than a 23 gauge pin nail, which is very small. So where would you use a pin nail versus a brad nail? So on this workbench, I actually used brad nails to put on this edge banding because it was about an inch thick and I wanted to be able to shoot all the way through there. And brad nails do have a head on them, so it gives it a little bit of holding power, even though I did glue these on as well. So on thicker pieces, and that you want a little bit more holding power, that's where you would use that at. They don't offer a lot of resistance to pulling. So if you actually pulled on a brad nail, a lot of times it would just go all the way through the wood and just pull through. Whereas on a pin nail, it's just for holding that piece on while the glue dries. If you saw my router table build, I used the pin nail to put on the trim, the walnut trim on the front, so that it would hold on there until the glue dried. Now, I never went back and filled those holes. There's no need to because those pin nails are so super small, as you can see here. You can barely see them. And a pin nailer is excellent for ornamental pieces like small boxes, or even if you're gonna be putting on really detailed trim, things like that. Here we have a piece of walnut, a piece of plywood, three quarter inch, and then a piece of pine. This is an off cut of a two by four. So the first thing we'll do is we'll shoot some brad nails in there. Wanna make sure don't put your hands under there. You may notice that it's poking up just a little bit there. And the reason is you can actually adjust the pressure or the, or the amount of force that's gonna be driving the nail with. 
On this one, it's right here. It, you can turn it to the right to go deeper, left to go more shallow. You can see that drove it in quite a bit deeper uh, because the force is more. On the pneumatic gun, very similar. You can actually adjust how much force it's going to give right up here at the top. One thing you may notice on the pneumatic gun is it's instant. As soon as I touch, it actually has to depress this piece before it works. And then as soon as you pull the trigger, it fires. On a battery powered, you push it down. That also has to depress. It's a safety feature. And then when you pull the trigger, you hear that ramp. It actually has to ramp up before it makes the uh, nail go in. That's just one of the things that you may notice. Also notice that all of these nails are at an angle. Why is that? Why do they not go straight through? A brad nail is actually a piece of wire that actually gets clipped uh, at the factory. If you notice, if you can see it on this video, this is actually a wedge shape at the end. It actually where it's been pinched off. It's been pinched in two. And when you pinch something like that, imagine pinching a piece of putty and when you pull it away, there's gonna be like a, a point there on the, on the nail. And so that's the same thing going on here. So when it actually is driving into the material, it's going to go one way or the other on the wedge. So why is that important? Well, the reason is if you're driving close to the edge of a piece of wood or trim, it blasts out the side. Why? Because that wedge, when it hits that wood grain, it's going to go right or left, depending on how you're holding your gun. Now, if you're holding it this way, it won't do that. It doesn't blow out. That's a good thing to keep in mind when you're driving brad nails. Now for the pin nailer, this is by far my favorite little nail gun. I love these little 23 gauge pin nails. They're perfect for holding small trim while the glue dries. It leaves virtually no hole. That is a tiny, tiny, tiny little mark. Walnut, drive through walnut just fine. And the way you load them, you just set them in there. The head goes to the back, the wedge or the point goes to the front. You'll slide them all the way to the top and then this thing will lock it in. Same thing on the rigid, you just throw those in there. On the brad nailer, you just push this bottom button to release it. For a pin nailer, how do you know which way to load them? Because they're the same on both ends, right? They're just straight, they don't have heads. If you flip it over, there's arrows showing you the direction. Put those in there and then this will slide up and lock over it. Also, when you load your nails in, make sure that you put them all the way against the front of the nail gun. You don't want them be, to be back here in the back. One inches, if you put them way back here and push it up, then it's, it's not gonna fire. A couple of things to consider on battery versus pneumatic is a battery is maintenance free. You just need to charge the battery and go. Whereas on a nail gun, you need to add oil every so often to keep it functioning properly. Now, it can go a while without doing that, but to make them last longer, to make them operate properly, a properly oiling them is the way to go. Each one requires different amount of drops. All that's in the user's manual. And it's very easy. You just drop it down in the actual airport and you're ready to go. Airport, air hole, whatever. Once you put oil in there, you wanna drive a few nails just to make sure that the oil gets into the tool and lubricates everything like it's supposed to. You can adjust the pressure that's required for the nail guns using this dial. On this air compressor, this shows how much pressure is in the tank and it's listed tank there. And this is how much is on the hose. In other words, that's how much is being pushed to your tool. If you turn it to the right, it will increase. If you turn it to the left, it will decrease. For a pin nailer or for this pin nailer, it shows right here that the operating pressure is between 60 and 100. So 60 minimum maximum of 100 so you wouldn't want to go over 100 i leave mine at about 90. for the brad nailer the minimum is going to be 70 and the maximum again is going to be 100. another thing to keep in mind with pneumatics is it doesn't have to stay plugged up i rarely plug this thing up unless i need it and it actually maintains pressure in there so long as none of your fittings have leaks everything rolls up into a nice compact size and it's not really that heavy maybe 10 or 15 pounds maybe 20 i'm not exactly sure but it's it's enough that you can just store it easily and bring it out when you need it. And if you've never used nomadic tools before, you may be confused as to how these work or how they come on and off. You actually have to push up and pull down on this fitting. So manipulate the fitting like that. And the same way when you go to put it on, it sometimes it can be difficult to actually get on there. If you just try to push it on, it won't work. You actually have to pull this down, push it on there. <laughs> it can be difficult. 
then let it go. That's how you operate those. And keeping, if you don't know about air compressors, you've never had one, this is a six gallon pancake air compressor. So you actually want, you wouldn't want to use this for painting, things like that. It just doesn't hold enough air to keep up with a paint sprayer. However, it works perfect for nail guns, things like that. Or even a little air shooter thing where you can just blast air. It also has a valve on the bottom to actually release any condensation that may happen Humidity changes, it's pulling in air, it gets humidity in there, it gets wet, it gets water in there. So you can actually take this, uh, loosen this off a little bit and water or condensation will come out. And you'll also use that valve to bleed the tank of air if you needed to do that. My recommendation for most woodworkers in a woodworking shop is to actually go with a pneumatic system. For one, you can buy a bundle that comes with the pin nailer, the brad nailer, and even a 16 gauge nailer if you wanted to do some finish work like nailing on crown molding or baseboards or whatever you need a 16 gauge for. The 18 and the pin nailer is what you're really gonna be using in the wood shop. And I was able, I was given this system actually by a good friend and it has been extremely good for me. I've really enjoyed having it. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room and they work extremely well. You get more, in my opinion, with this system versus just buying these. And these are really expensive, like a couple hundred to $250 just for the nail gun, where you can get the whole system set up for about that price for the three guns and an air compressor. If you're on the job site, then going house to house or job to job, then the battery is probably gonna be the best option because you don't have to wag around the cable or the, the hose up and down stairs or in and out of the house, things like that. As far as weight, this seven pound thing can be actually a huge burden on you if you're driving nails overhead or having to hold it up and drive into crown molding, things like that. So that's another thing you may wanna keep in mind. Just depends on what you're doing. However, for just being lightweight and easier to use, the pneumatic is much better in my opinion. I'll put a link in the description below to all these tools to help you make a better decision on what you need for your shop. If you like this video, I've got a couple of more tool videos you're gonna really like. Click that box right there, click in that box, get you a big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.